Welcome to Pagan Coffee Talk. Here are your hosts, Oswin and Lord Knight. Are you ready for today's topic? Sure. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> if you're giggling and laughing, <laughs> I'm doomed. No, not that bad. Just drugs and witchcraft. Drugs are actually a very good thing. Okay, but they're illegal. <laughs> yes, they are. Um, most of the ones most people talk about when they refer to uh, right. drug use <laughs> and witchcraft. Yeah, most of them are hallucinogens and stuff. But if I remember correctly, the way the law is set up is if your religion believes in it, you're allowed to do it. But you have to do it in a religious context. You cannot just sit on your couch, smoke a joint, watch a Spectre gadget, eating Doritos. Right. I am stuck on this Dorito thing. You really are. <laughs> but and again, as far as, and as far as the laws go, be sure to check in your local area what your laws yes. are. I, I can tell you what they are for North Carolina, and that's it. <laughs> and from my understanding, North Carolina, and you have to prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Right. <laughs> it has to be in like, you know, gold written hieroglyphics. Mm hmm. Handed down by Tuatha Dé Danann, by the uh, by Danu herself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Normally, I re I remember a long time ago. I saw this documentary on uh, drugs and religion. Mm -hmm. And what they did was they went to these smaller tribes and stuff like that that have less influence of the modern world. Right. They did this on purpose. Because they were they were trying to eliminate the modern world as being our drug problem. Does okay. that make sense? Right. It's a ignoring our quote unquote war on drugs. Right. Ignoring our war on drugs and our view of them and what they do and what they don't do. All right. So just in case being a drug addict wasn't a cultural thing is what right. they were trying to figure out. Right. What they did find out is, long as drugs are done in a religious context, do you know drug addicts never appear? Hmm. What they have found was all these tribes and stuff that use these drugs, nobody in these tribes who did these drugs for a religious experience ever became drug addicts. Well, I think part of that is because at that point, you've got the, the shamans or the you know, whatever the tribe calls them, but you've got those spiritual leaders who know how to use them. Well, you also have and this. And then they're being supervised. Yes. All that is true. Plus, you also have the thought of the individual. If you're becoming part of the priesthood, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you're studying to become a shaman or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Your teacher might give you drugs to alter your consciousness so you know what it feels like. But again, you're being supervised. You're being supervised. You're also being trained because using drugs is kind of like what we were talking about using guided meditations. Right. It's a training tool. It isn't the real thing itself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because you don't know how to get to the spiritual realm through meditation and stuff like that and all this. We're going to give you drugs to push you over there so you understand what it's like to get there, what it's going to take without the drugs. Right. But as as far as those tribes go, I think a lot of them are actually using it to delve deeper into that realm. Oh, yeah. It's not just, you know, hey, we're using this drug to get you here. Right. No, we're well, no, using it to throw you in deeper. They're using it as a training tool in the same way we talked about guided meditations. It is to show you where the feeling is. It's just to show you how to get there so you can learn how to do it without the drugs. When you're in the priesthood or you're studying to become this spiritual leader, your responsibility is to your people, not to you getting stoned. Right. And you can't do that when you're stoned, so therefore self-control comes back in. The desire to be this spiritual person should override any other thing you have. In the same way we look at meditation, 
All right. right. I'm sorry. If you cannot meditate uh, daily, you need to get out of witchcraft. If you can't do it, then quit doing this. You need to follow a different religion. This is not for you. This is a basic requirement. You you see what I'm saying? Yeah. uh, To be a basic requirement uh, to be a spiritual leader, you have to be in control of your faculties all the time. Right. So you can't do drugs. You can only do drugs th- that you need to to do your rituals. And even then, you try your best to limit them as much as you can. Because eventually, as you're going through this journey, you're eventually, your, your spiritual guide's going to eventually teach you, well, here's how you make the drug. Here's how you minister to the drug. Here's how you control the doses of the drug. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. You don't want to exceed this much. You're going to learn all that. Once you learn it, you learn it. That don't mean you can't administer the stuff to yourself afterwards. Right. What prevents these people from just staying stoned on the couch is their spiritual responsibility to their community. That's what keeps them from being a drug addict. All right. Did that make sense? Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with it. No, I do not think you should do ritual while stoned. That's just, that's asking for trouble. Somebody will get set on fire or be impaled by a sword or something. I just, uh. <laughs> right. There's, 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 there's too much that can go wrong. Right. It's limited. It is controlled. It is used sparingly. And it's only used enough to guide you, not do it for you. All right. Well, I, I do know that there are some native tribes where they use drugs. They use hallucinogens. Yes. Or uh, prophecies, you know, talking I, to the ancestors. Right. Again. They use done. them on a regular basis, though. Well, I mean, w- like whenever they're doing that. That's what they do. They use a particular drug in a certain dose. Uh Uh-huh. But what's a regular basis? Are we talking twice a year? Four times a year? Well, I don't know. I'm just saying. But do you see what I'm saying? Right. But you said it was a training thing. But I'm saying that there are those where it's part of their process. Well, it might be part of a specific ritual. You're not doing that ritual every day. Well, no. That, does that make sense? You're only going to do those special rituals and stuff like that at certain times. All right. So, All right. Because okay, you got to understand what makes a drug addict a drug addict is the fact that their desire for the drug overrides all their other desires. Right. Again, the most hideous of all the emotions, okay, is love. Why is it the most hideous? For the love of drugs, for the love of money, for oh. the love of a woman. Okay, yeah. How many wars have been fought and, and stories have been made over love? How many people have been killed over love? Right. Again, it can be one of the most insidious emotions we have is love because we'll do almost anything for it to keep it true. True. To get it. Yeah, and I mean, love drives a lot of things and not necessarily good things. No, Well, no, but wars have been fought over love. Oh, I yes, mean, they have. I mean, that's what the whole Trojan War was supposedly about, was over a woman. Right. I mean, that's what the whole story is about. Mm-hmm. It's over love. You know, what was that? Yeah, the face that launched the thousand ships. Right. I still like the Monty Python there where they're actually using her to christen all the boats and literally. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> they keep on tying her up and just slinging her into boats one right after another. <laughs> right. But drugs and craft, not that big of a deal. You know, yeah, be responsible, follow the law, don't, you know. But I don't necessarily have a problem with it. What I have a problem with is when we're talking about drugs and craft is you doing it to yourself. So you think it's okay as long as it's supervised? 
I think it's all right. I, I to a certain extent, I think it's all right if it's supervised. I also think it's all right, and I have less of a problem with it if it's more of a natural drug versus a processed drug. Right. And I guess that really depends on how much of a process you're talking about there. You know, if you're just talking about drying out leaves, technically that's a process. So Mm -hmm. just like, you know, drying out mushrooms and all this other stuff, there's a little bit of process. I was going to say, are you, are you talking processed as in like meth where it's got other non-natural ingredients in it? Exactly. Meth, cocaine, cocaine is just the process on it's just got way too much, too intense, more more than what it should be in nature. So as long as it's, you think as long as it's a natural. Right. So like, again. Like using I, herbs. Right. Then that's okay. I, I don't have a problem with it. You know, again, you still got to abide by the laws of the land. And unfortunately right now there's this process is still illegal. Right. You know, I, I, I wish the rules were relaxed a little bit more so some covens and other people could experiment with these better in a more sense. Right. You know, yes, we, we might even have to go to, you know, some of these tribes and people that do use these drugs to go, and okay, how do y'all do it? And actually have that conversation with them. I know right now it's kind of hard to do unless you're living in certain states. Right, <laughs> right. But, you know, it's not the be all or begin all, you know. Well, and the, even then, there's some of those natural drugs that um, are only able to be used by certain people. Right. Like I know indigenous Americans. Native Americans, whatever. I don't know what they're being called now, but, um, you know, they use peyote. And But you see, the, the strange thing there is you also got to remember how this is set up. When your own reservation land, mm-hmm. technically you're in a different country. Right, I understand that, but I'm right. just saying as they're far only, as they're they're only bound by federal laws. But yes, there's a lot of things that the I'm just saying as far as their use of peyote, yeah, nobody outside of that culture in America is allowed to use peyote. But outside of that religious religion, right, right. What we're trying to do here is to separate spiritual use of drugs from getting stoned. Right, from recreational use. Right, the recreational use, all right? What you got to understand is, how do you know it's recreational? If they're administering to themselves, okay? And not following like a set plan for pain pills or stuff like that, right? Well, and even then, I could could see things getting out of hand as you've got the high priest or a high priestess who's going around administering to other people and just, you know, hey, go have a good time. Go have a good time. Again, it's got to it, be struct. It's got it, to be a structured thing. You're you're having to walk these people through it. You're going to have to be hyper aware that these people are more sensitive. Mm-hmm. Pro- might be more emotional, uh, or have a you know, or a different disposition. Trying to meditate on why on marijuana is the most dumbest thing in the world because. The two don't always jive well together. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, on the other hand, sometimes it's easier to do. <laughs> well, I guess that depends on, uh, it depends on you know, how it affects you. Exactly. And since you don't know, you're going to have to be aware of that doing it. Right. You're also going to have to have a phone by just in case, because if you're doing hallucinogens, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, you're probably going to want to have somebody stand by. I'd even have to go as far as, you know, if you happen to have a nurse or somebody in your coven, hey, let me put you on speed dial. <laughs> right. Just I mean, in case. You, just in case, because you don't know what kind of allergic reactions people might have. Well, and and see, that's a good reason to have it all supervised as well. That way you've got somebody who's sober. Mm-hmm. So that if something does go wrong, yeah, they can pick up the phone and dial 911 and get you to a hospital. Exactly. You know, or be able to talk you down off that ledge. People have issues 
And again, I'm I'm back to if you ain't meditated and took care of it and all that, taking hallucinogens are only going to amp up the effects. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it, I, I think it actually, I think most hallucinogens I've heard of actually work just like we talk about with our meditation process. Mm -hmm. It literally forces you to deal with your issues, but because it's so dramatic, it can kind of wig you out if you ain't got somebody sitting there going, no, 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 breathe. Nothing can hurt you. It's just a memory. <laughs> right, right. You know, at the time, it could look that real to you. Well, sure it could, yeah. You know, again, I, I wish therapists, I wish they'd allow therapists or psychologists to actually administer some of these drugs in sessions or right before the session to where in the world they can sit down and talk to these people. Yeah, I mean, it, it might actually be beneficial, but I think if they were going to do that, they would still have to have maybe a trained medical professional on hand. Well, they are, psychologists are trained medical. They do no, have I some mean, medical, they have, they have, they have more medical training than me or you or just your average person. Well, I understand that, but right. they're probably still not to the point where they could handle somebody having a severe allergic reaction. Oh, probably, to something. probably you know what I mean? not. Probably that's, not. That's they what were, I'm saying. Just have, even if it comes down to having a medical professional to be able to sit there and knock them out if they need to, before they hurt themselves. <laughs> right. You know, right. somebody who's, who's trained in the use of certain medications to counteract whatever it was they might've taken. Well, see, I, I hate to be this, but my understanding, and I could be wrong with this, like ecstasy mm -hmm. was originally created as a drug for psychologists to use to put everybody in a happy feeling to make them feel really, really good so they could talk about more traumatic stuff. Um, that would be worth doing some research on. I have, I've never heard that. Well, the, the idea was we're going to give you this drug. It's going to make you happy. And then we're going to talk. It's going to make you super happy and feel good. And we're going to talk and we're going to sit down and talk about more traumatic stuff while you're in this mood because it's going to be less traumatic for you. Right. And I think they were mainly doing this originally with people with PTSD. Well, I mean, it makes sense, but I just, like I said, I don't, I don't know. I've, I've never researched it. I know, well, I've never heard that to research it. So, right. I mean, that's kind of like, you know, most of the, because of the laws, most of the research on marijuana came to a dead stop in the United States. Right. The fact is, is that we can use it to make fuel and not have to burn corn. Right. I mean, we can't, you can use the hemp plant to make alcohol to burn in your car. Right. <laughs> right. As fuel. <laughs> among know, other things. Among other things. And again, hey, let's do this to a f food source or do this to the, to the hemp plant. Let's mm -hmm. do it to the hemp plant. So when you start thinking along them lines, all that research just stopped when they changed the law and made it illegal. Right. But in recent years, I'd say in the past five to 10 years, there's, there's been more research that's uh, crept back up. Oh yeah. So, I mean, they're, they are trying to get back into it, but again, still hindered by certain laws and regulations, regulations. and people, certain people wanting to hear certain things and not hear the other things. Right. You know, just like, you know, most, most people, yo, we got to take the drugs out of religion or everybody's going to become drug addicts, which is a lie. Right. The problem was taking drugs out of religion. Right. We took drugs out of religion, and now we have drug addicts. Right. You, you, you take it out of that religious context, and that's just allowing people to do whatever with it. It's an excuse. Yes. It's like we said, it's, it's like we said in the Manifest Destiny. The reason it was used to justify the expansion in the West in the United States was it was just used to justify doing this for no other reason than to do it. Right. You know, to make them feel great. Hey, yeah, yeah. Y'all were controlling your destiny. Your ball. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's, it's not real. What is real is when we took these drugs out of the religious context, out of the shaman's hands and put it in pharmacist hands. And now we have drug problems. Right. Oh, so, here, take this drug. 
Exactly. Personally, I, I don't think that we should have a war on drugs. And whatever drugs you want to take as an adult, you should be able to buy and take. Hmm. If you go to a doctor and get a, you know, hey, can I get a recommendation? <laughs> right. What do you think I need to be taking <laughs> for this? <laughs> you know, I, I still think it's ridiculous that every time I get a sinus infection, I have to go to a doctor, pay him money just to go to just to go to the pharmacy to get a 10 day supply of antibiotics and some steroids for the sinus pressure. I know when I have a sinus infection, I believe I should be able to go to the pharmacy going, hey, I need this stuff. I have a sinus infection. <laughs> you know, and the pharmacist, and then don't get me wrong, I think the pharmacists need to, the pharmacies need to track this along with your doctors so they can sit there and go, oh, no, 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 no. You're taking too much antibiotic now. <laughs> right. Right. You know, I mean, that's just, you know, just like, you know, this pain medication. Yeah, it needs to be monitored. People can kill themselves because people do forget, misread the instructions mm -hmm. on these things. I Dana, mean, I can't think of how many times I've misread instructions and be like, wait a minute, it said take two twice a day. Or what, what, what's that one for the, you take two that morning, then you take two more, and then you take two, and then the next day you take the same amount but one less. Some of them can get really confusing. They can, yeah, especially yeah. if you don't take them that often. Right, like the steroid stuff. I know the steroids. Yeah, you start off with this maximum amount, and then over a couple of days start. Oh yes. Down. Oh oh god, those those steroid packs. Those are <laughs> the worst. But again. You know, if you're overdoing this or overdoing that, yeah, I, your pharmacy should your pharmacist should know you enough to go, hey, Bob, you, you're getting a little heavy on the Xanax, <laughs> right? You know, and again, I don't want people to go into work stoned or anything like that where they're going to hurt themselves mm -hmm. at the same time or hurt others. But we're back to if it's in a religious context, what they discovered and it's supervised. Right. What they discovered was as long as drugs in a society remain in a religious context, those drugs are never used in an abusive way. Right. You know, it's not like taking painkillers where you're taking a bunch of them to relieve pain and then become addicted to them just from the normal use. Right. Which is what we have a problem with now, but that's beside the point. <laughs> Right, which, I mean, that's, I don't know. To me, that's just interesting that if it's strictly in a religious context and it's supervised in a religious context. That these people never become drug addicts. Right. You right. never and, have and, this problem. And and for the tribes, what they found out about the people who weren't shamans and stuff, mm -hmm. they looked at this as this was shaman stuff. They have to do it. We can't. Right. So when they were doing like their vision quest or whatever and they were given a drug even they understood we have to get it from a priest so even right. if i do like it and i go back the priest ain't going to give me no more mm -mm. no you did your vision quest that's it right you know you're we're, we're not going to do that ritual for another three months <laughs> right you know again just like you know we're talking about like with therapists you know, right. you go, you go in, you might take a, a LSD or something like that and go sit down and talk to your therapist. It, she, when that session's done, it might be another three to six months before she tries to do another session like that. Right. Because she doesn't want you to get addicted to the drug. We don't want to rely on the drug. We just want to push you past a certain spot to where you don't need the drug anymore. Absolutely. And it's the same thing in religion. When you see shamans teach people like this, I'm going to let you use this drug until you're able to do it without it. Mm -hmm. Make sense? You're right. So I think that's about it. You got any other questions? Awesome. No, I think that pretty much covers it. I'm out of coffee. I guess we'll see y'all next week. Thanks for listening. Join us next week for another episode. Pagan Coffee Talk is brought to you by Life Temple and Seminary. Please visit us at lifetempleseminary.org for more information, as well as links to our social media, Facebook, Discord, 
Twitter, YouTube, and Reddit. We travel down this trodden path, the maze of stone and mire. Just hold my hand as we pass by a sea of blazing pyres. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning breaks. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning breaks.